Continuing on in section 4.5, uh, we're going to go ahead and simplify here. So feel free to pause and give it a try if you'd like. Here, I have a to the fourth times 10 times a cubed over a squared. I always want to make sure that my numerator and denominator are completely simplified before I start moving between them. Uh, and my numerator here is not. I have powers with the same base. So I keep my base and I can go ahead and add those exponents, uh, which is going to give me a to the seventh power. I still have the 10 and I'm still dividing by a squared, but I've simplified my numerator. Now I am dividing powers with the same base, which means I can keep my base and I can subtract those exponents. So 7 minus 2 is going to give me a to the fifth. Keep in mind, I still have that 10. I didn't change at all. So it's 10 a to the fifth. Give 14 a try. In my numerator, I have 13 times b to the fourth times b to the fourth. In my denominator, I just have a b. So my numerator is not as simple as I can get it. I can combine these b to the fourths. Same base, so I keep that. And I go ahead and add my numerators. 4 plus 4 gives me 8. I bring over my 13 that I didn't change, and I'm still dividing by the b. Those didn't change. The only thing that changed was inside the box there. Now. I am dividing with the same base as I've simplified my numerator. My denominator is as simple as I can get it. I can go ahead and simplify between the two of them now. Uh, so I keep my base. Remember, our exponent is a 1 if it's not shown. And since I'm dividing powers with the same base, I subtract my exponents, 8 minus 1. Here, that's going to give me b to the 7th. And don't forget about our 13 here that we didn't change. So 13 b to the seventh. Give 15 a try. Here I have x times 7 times x to the fifth. Remember those coefficients are just their own factors over 10 times x to the fourth. So my numerator is not as simple as I can get it. I can combine these x terms into 1. Multiplying powers with the same base so I keep my exponent, uh, or so I keep my base, add my exponents. If there's not a an exponent, uh, remember that it's a 1 there. So now I can add those exponents. 1 plus 5 is going to give me to the 6th power. I still have that 7 in my numerator and 10 times x to the 4th in my denominator. I didn't change those at all. Now I can, though. Uh, we're going to look at this as two separate pieces. I'm going to look at my coefficients and see if I can simplify those. 7 and 10, uh, the greatest common factor is 1, so I'm going to keep that as 7 over 10. Now, my bases are both x's, so I keep my base in my numerator and go ahead and subtract my exponents. 6 minus 4 gives me 2. So 7 times x squared over 10 is a simplified form there. And in 16, here I have 12 times y squared times y to the eighth power over 16 times y to the fifth. My numerator is not as simple as I can get it. I can go ahead and combine my y terms. Because they have the same base, I keep my base. I'm multiplying them so I can go ahead and add my exponents. Here I didn't change my 12 and I didn't change anything in my denominator yet. The only thing I changed was combining those y's that were being multiplied in my numerator. Now if I look here, everything's as simple in the numerator as I can get it and in the denominator. So I can think about my fraction as two separate pieces. I can think about my uh, coefficients and reduce them. The greatest common factor between 12 and 16 is 4. So I'm going to go ahead and divide numerator and denominator by 4 and it's going to give me 3 over 4. Now I can work with my y's. There's a y in my denominator and my numerator. So I keep my base in my numerator, subtract my exponents. 10 minus 5 gives me 5. 
So I get 3y to the fifth power divided by 4. And that's all I have for section 4.5.